Kia ora and talo falava and very warm Pacific greetings from the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world and our part of the world. Uh, my name is Lua Manaval Winnie Laban and I'm a New Zealand born Samoan of Jewish Danish descent and I currently work in paid work as the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Pacifica at Te Hiringa Waka, the Victoria University in Wellington. When Audrey told me to reflect on my younger self, and as you know, we always say to ourselves, we are forever young, I pointed to a, a poem that my mother's first cousin, who's a poet and a writer, wrote. And I thought I would share those two verses to, to, to bring a context to where I'm coming from. I didn't just appear on this earth. We all come from history and genealogy, which is sacred. So Uncle Albert, my mother's first cousin, wrote this poem called Parents and Children. Parents and their children come to one another through many doors that laugh, slap, clap, slash, bleed, block, cry, and let you through sometimes. And by the time they meet, they've been served to the rags and bones of who they were and can't remember. Around our high house, minor birds dart and dive. I count the holes they pierce in the sky. My son is in the garage fixing the brakes of his bike. In her bedroom, my daughter is locked into Captain America. I've left believing in God. My children are starting towards him. I carry willingly the heritage of my dead. My children have yet to recognize theirs. Someday before they leave our house forever, I'll tell them our dead are the splendid robes our souls wear. The armada of minor birds continues to attack the trees and sky. Their ferocity cuts wounds in my thoughts. Through those wounds like doors, I'll go this morning to meet my children. So in us, we carry willingly the heritage of our dead and the understanding of history and context and culture and values that we have learned from that journey and from our ancestors. So in terms of a digital age, I'm also thinking that life and age is cyclical. So the kinds of values that I've been brought up have always been intrinsically connected to the communal, uh, to the extended family, that I can never claim good well-being unless the whole claims good well-being. And so from a young age where my parents came, and it is because of colonization, it was cash economy, they needed people to come and work here. I was born in the 50s. But I always grew up with a sense that I was never the center of the world of my parents. My parents' lives were intrinsically connected to advocacy, to supporting others in the family and extended family and the community, whether it be advocacy for housing, whether it would be social justice in terms of employment, um, immigration type issues. So my parents were leaders at that time. They came from an ancestry of leadership, of service, of resilience, because the dream has always been that we can participate as equals, but we bring our diversity and our creativity uh, to the table. So the whole call to serve is intrinsic to the culture, because it's never about me. It is always about we. And that's, and at the end of the day, the me also has a place. It's not exclusive. It's just not primary. People always say to me, Winnie, what did you do in your youth? But I never really had a youth in a sense where you can go and explore the world and explore yourself. I had to grow up very quickly. I was the eldest. I took on responsibilities that perhaps were people's roles that were double my age. And I knew I had to be a role model. So Audrey, I would have loved to have spread my wings and probably been a bit courageous, including with relationships. But at the end of the day, you know, it's humbling because I've learned so much and you don't actually appreciate that um, until you're a bit older. And one of my attractions to the background where I've worked in counseling, community development, social work, university, 
is that I never birthed children, but I never see that because my brother, my cousins, I have stepchildren. Um, for me, you know, those are all my children. For me, I'm a mother and I'm a sister and I'm a, I'm a friend. And I love working with young people because they, they, they keep me young. They're also a great source of intelligence and creativity and innovation, but now and then you've got to guide them because at the end of the day, it's their protection and safety. They may not thank you uh, for another 20 years or 30 years, but these are all learnings, as I said, that we've learned that we pass on. And I think if people could understand that families can be difficult, but it's also about working with communities, their diverse voices, and how important it is that we value the life we have while we have it. And to always try, I think, to keep people focused on going forward as opposed to feeling stuck. Mm. Well, Winnie, thank you so much for sharing your journey. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Such an amazing story. And I'm so glad we got a chance to cross paths and meet.